As blacksmiths, we have an advantage over a lot of other people in that we can punch a hole in just about any size and shape we choose to. But sometimes being able to drill a precise hole in a precise spot is beneficial. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge and the tool of the day. A drill press, even a relatively small drill press, can be an extremely useful thing in the blacksmith shop. I use this a lot. I punch more holes now than I used to, but there's still a lot of things that drilling is the right way to go, making monkey tools, things like that. I prefer to drill the hole in tongs because it is more precise sometimes than a punched hole, but you can do it either way. But a drill press does open some doors. It does make your life a little bit easier. If you're fabricating tools, if you're repairing machinery and equipment for the shop, being able to drill holes so that you can tap and thread things exactly is critical. You can't punch a hole very accurately that you're going to thread. You can, but it's not as accurate as getting the exact right size drill and drilling a hole for threading. So I have a drill press and I've had a drill press in my shop almost since day one. It was one of the very first machine tools that I bought. Probably a grinder and a drill press showed up at about the same time. This is a little old one I got at an auction. I think I paid 25 bucks for this one. And it, it works okay, not anything special. This other one over here is a pretty cool old Clausing drill press. It has infinitely variable speeds from 500 up to 4,000 RPMs. Why I would ever drill a hole at 4,000 RPMs, I don't know. It came with different motors, and with a slower motor, it would go down to 330, and that would be better. Unfortunately, this drill press has a bit of a rattle to it. It clatters. I don't know if you can hear that. The belt has been replaced. The drive pulley has been returned and new bushings put in it. But it still is not perfectly balanced, so it almost never gets used. I'm hoping I'll be able to replace this at some point. So if there are any big machine tool manufacturers or dealers out there that would like to sponsor Black Bear Forge and the YouTube channel by sending me a drill press, give me a call. Operators are standing by. Nope, nothing. Oh well. A good variable speed drill press is really a benefit and this will be something that I'm gonna replace probably next year. I'm gonna look in the used tool market. I really don't wanna to have to spend the money for a new one. But this was a good deal on a used drill press and it's always had those little issues of being out of balance and running way faster than it should. So maybe I should invest the money in a brand new one or find somebody that knows how to completely rebuild this and might actually have the parts that aren't quite right. I think it's just been well abused over its lifetime and that's why it's not a perfect drill press. But the little one, as I said, with a quarter horse motor, really does pretty much everything I need a drill press to do. Now this big beast is serious overkill, and it doesn't actually run. It is seized up tight. It spent who knows how many years living outside. The person that had it was gonna haul it off, sell it for scrap. I felt sorry for it, so I took it. It lives here hoping that someday I will find the time to work on it, and if not, maybe somebody in a future generation will feel sorry for it and restore it and put it back to work. It's a great big Canada Auto. It has automatic down feed. Set up with a three-phase motor right now, but may not need that. Just a monster of a drill press. And sadly, it has some broken castings on it. The belt guard up front, although I have the pieces. And the hand wheel had a really nice cast iron hand wheel that got broken in transport. That was entirely my fault. So it's a, a pretty impressive drill press. Right now it's just a convenient table to set things on though. But not everybody has the space or the budget or even the electrical power to run a drill press. So hand drills can be very handy. Corded ones, if you have power, generally have more oomph than the battery operated ones. But if you don't have power in your shop, battery operated tools can really be a good option. Being able to charge the batteries in the house and bring charged batteries up to the shop. For those few times that you need to drill a hole or countersink something with a hand drill, battery operated tools can really be a nice way to go. And I really like the new Milwaukee tools. I used to like DeWalt stuff 
but I was measuring my battery life and how many batteries did I go through a day, even if I wasn't working very hard. Now I measure battery life in, I can't remember when I changed the battery last. I don't know when I changed this battery. It was probably two or three weeks ago. I don't use it all the time, and if I was using it all day, I would change it more. But the DeWalt batteries just would not last like the ones in these Milwaukee t Fuel brand tools. Now, Milwaukee is not paying me to say that. I don't work, work for Milwaukee. I'm not sponsored by Milwaukee. But if Milwaukee's watching and they want to sponsor Black Bear Forge and send me some free tools or pay to have a sponsored video, I'd be glad to hear from you. Give me a call. Operators are standing by. Nah, still nothing. Sometimes you need to go just a little bit bigger, even with a hand drill, because you can't get things under the drill press or if you're doing installs out on a job site or working on equipment in the shop that just simply isn't movable. And having a big drill comes in really handy. This is a much more powerful drill. Powerful enough you really got to be careful with it because it's got the torque that it can really twist and hurt an elbow or a shoulder or something if you're not holding on to it good and tight and not comfortable with what you're doing. But this can come in really handy sometimes. Doesn't get used all the time. It's one of the few tools I have that live in a case because it gets used so rarely. The ones I use all the time, it's just not worth putting in and out of the case. So they usually live in a, a locker on a shelf or hang on the wall. Another tool that can come in really handy if you're doing installation work and you need to drill into stone or concrete is a hammer drill or rotary hammer. We used to refer to them when I was doing construction work. And this will drill holes in concrete, stone, and things like that. You can rent these, but quite some time ago when I was anchoring a power hammer, I looked at the price to rent and realized that I had to run to town, I had to rent it, I had to come home, I had to drill four holes, I had to load it back up, I had to run back to town. And if I did that two or three times, I might as well have just bought one. So I bought this probably 20 years ago. I it probably saved 10 times what I would have paid to rent in that same amount of time by using this. And if you're mounting equipment in your shop, if you're bolting a power hammer, a treadle hammer, a fly press to a concrete floor, this is the tool you need to drill the holes. Now I've never found any use for the little hand cranked egg beater style drills here in the blacksmith shop, but my understanding is that Tom Latinay uses one and gets pretty good use out of one. So that is an option if you don't have electricity and if you're a very patient person. Other things can drill holes as well. If you have a milling machine, they can often be used as a milled slash drill. Or if you have a lathe, you can inbore things that are spinning in the lathe and that comes in handy. So being able to drill a hole is a very useful thing to have that option even though we can punch holes most of the time. I do encourage you to learn to punch holes and to become proficient at punching holes but it's just not always the best answer and sometimes having the ability to drill a hole really makes a difference. As far as drill bits go, if it's a size you use all the time, buy the best drill bits you can afford to buy. Cheap drill bits wear out, you have to throw, throw them out or resharpen them. The good ones last longer and they're more worth the trouble to resharpen them. We'll get into sharpening drill bits some other time. That's a whole nother subject for a video. But if you can learn to sharpen drill bits, you'll keep your drill bits around a lot longer and the bigger ones are worth sharpening. Some big drill bits are really expensive. Eighth inch and under drill bits aren't worth my time to sharpen, so I never bother. I just buy a lot of them. I keep sometimes a dozen or more of the most common sizes on hand and have a little drawer index that I put all those drills in. So if I wear one out in a big project, I know I have one to replace it right away. I also keep a big set that has a full fractional drill bit set, number drill bit set, and letter drill bit set. And if you're not familiar with numbered and lettered drills, they are often the sizes that you need to tap a threaded hole. For instance, a quarter inch 20 threaded hole needs to be drilled with a number seven drill bit. And these are somewhere kind of in between some of the fractional bits and they're very precise sizes and they have very precise uses. Now, if you're not in the US and you're not using fractional measurements, you may not need those bits. Things may be in even millimeter sizes. I'm not sure what 
what you use, but figure out what you need for the tap drills where you are if you need to have tap drills. The big set of drill bits that I have are cheap drill bits. I bought them as a cheap set. They wear out really fast, but I have at least one of everything that I might ever need in that set of drill bits. And when I use one and wear it out, and I replace it with a high quality one. And the ones I use all the time, like the number seven, which is the only reason I remember that that's what a quarter 20 thread needs, I buy several of, so I have extras on hand, just like I do the others. As always, I hope you found that interesting. You can give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but do it safely, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.